What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Trying to get the rest of this land cleared over here. I got the tractor out. I got Diesel here with me, my little buddy. What are you doing, eating grass? Oh, what are you doing? Does that taste good? Does that taste good? Are you crazy? <laughs> He's eating grass. Um, all right, so as you guys seen in my other video, I got all this cleared here. It actually turned out really nice. It's actually nice and flat. Um, I won't have to do a lot of grading in this area other than removing some stumps and cleaning it up and whatnot. Um, so that's all done. I do gotta like touch it up and whatnot around the trees and stuff, but I'm not gonna do that today. I just wanna keep continuing this on. Um, so I'm gonna start right here where I left off and see if I can maybe get to the end of like these patch of trees down here. Hoping I can get to the end of that so that this is all cleared in here. Um, so that's what I'm gonna be working on today. Doesn't really need a long introduction. Just figured I'd let you guys know before I get going on this. I also gotta go back up to Sean's this weekend and finish uh, grading out the land up there. I got that rest of the pile of topsoil I gotta spread. So I'll be doing that tomorrow. So hopefully you guys have a couple of videos this week to watch. So uh, let's get on a Kubota BX here and uh, we'll get to work. Perfect.
Alright guys, well I didn't get as much time out here as I wanted today. Um, there was a lot of trees in here. Lots of trees that I had to knock down. They were in this area here. There was a tree here, there was a tree there, there was a tree here. There's just a lot of trees in here. Um, a lot of dead ones that I wanted to knock down and rip out. Um, so that, that took up a lot of time and with all these trees that are in this area It's hard to get mobility like you, you got to constantly turn you're backing up into stuff and so it's very tight in through here So it's definitely gonna take me a little bit longer in through here than it did over here But I also don't think I have to strip it down as far because pretty much once I get all the brush out of here A lot of it's just high grass and saplings So I'm gonna use like a brush hog or my mower like these saplings here and stuff I'm just gonna mow right over them and then um what I do at the end is I take my grater box. Once I got everything looking a little bit better than this here, I'll take my grater box and I'll run it all over here and I'll let it get full of topsoil and then it'll grate everything out nice and smooth. So like all these little bumps and humps, so that'll knock all that down and it'll fill in all the low spots. So um, yeah, it works out pretty good. That's how I got it pretty level up top there in the front. Um, so I'll be doing that again here so you guys will be able to see me use the grater box. Um, I know a lot of you guys have been wanting to see that. Um, it's just, it's it's tough, you know, to bring on jobs with me all the time with my trailer. Um, the size of my trailer really isn't made to haul anything other than my tractor. And then it's just one more thing I gotta load up. The grader box isn't quick hitch compatible, so I gotta remove my weights, I gotta remove my heavy hitch, I got to remove my quick hitch, I gotta remove all that, then I gotta pin it on, and then I gotta adjust it. And somewhere like Sean's house, where everything's on a slope and on a hill, it's just a pain in the butt because you gotta keep adjusting it. Um, something like this here, where everything is pretty much flat and where I want to make it flat, it won't be bad. But Sean's, I got to keep that hill. You know, I got to keep it sloped the way it is. So I can't just carve that flat. So here it's a lot more easier. You could just kind of adjust it once and just go and just keep going with it and just keep driving around until everything's filled. I'll go around all these trees and it really does do a really nice job grading topsoil and stone. I mean, it really does. So anyways, that's what I got done today. Like I said, not a whole lot, but it's progress. I'll get in here uh, later this week, maybe Sunday when I mow, and I'll mow through some of this, get some of these saplings knocked down, and it'll look a lot nicer. That's what I did over here. Any saplings and stuff that was left, instead of trying to dig it all out my bucket and making more holes in the ground, I just mow over it and eventually they'll die out. Um, unless they're a bigger sapling, then I'll pull them out with the bucket. Um, but that's this turned out really nice, and I just mowed it one time. And so far, nothing has really come back other than grass. I had a little incident today. I bet my bucket level indicator. I got to pushing on some trees and one of the trees came back and landed down on this. Um, and this rod is just secured. This is how you adjust it is with this one bolt here that acts like a grub screw and keeps it tight. When that branch hit, it actually rotated the rod sideways. So when I curled up, the rod actually caught in this bracket here um, and it actually bent it. So I'll pull it back out, straighten it out. It's no big deal though. This poor tractor takes a beating though. Um, let me show you guys my grader boxes. I don't think I've done that in a while. I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. The other thing about the greater box that I didn't tell you guys is it's a five foot box and on a Kubota BX, you really want a four foot greater box. Five foot's a little too much. Um, you know, it does handle it, but if you get like a real, if I get it full of topsoil and I'm going over some hard ground, I mean, it'll, it'll slow it right down. It has a real tough time doing it, but it, it does work. Um, the greater box I got from my father for free, so I can't really complain. That's why I have it. But here's my grader box. It's a five foot king cutter. And like I said, it's not quick hitch compatible. Um, one of the ways that you can tell if something's quick hitch compatible or not is if you're able to pick up with that hook and just catch the upper top mount um, like this here on my back blade. Now again, this is too big. This is actually a six foot back blade. And what would be ideal on a BX is a five foot back blade. This is a country line back blade. And as you can see here, the pin hangs out so that when you lift your quick hitch, the hook can catch that pin. And if you look on this one, the top pin is in line with the bottom pin. So there's no way for that hook to come under here and catch that. So what you gotta do with that is you gotta buy a special quick hitch compatible, like it's like a converter. And what it does is it pins on here and then it's got another pin here. So it basically pivots, it comes off of here and it's got another pin that'll come off here. So like you're able to pick up on it with that hook and, and grab that top pin. Um, so that that's one thing I can do to use this. But the other thing is now that I'm thinking about it, the spread on these two bottom pins is actually so wide that my quick hitch, it doesn't quite reach from side to side. So it's a little wider than my quick hitch. So it actually wouldn't work either way. And I think that's why I never did buy that quick hitch top pin thing. Um, but yeah, anyway, if I gotta take it on a job, I pretty much gotta load it up in the back of my truck or I gotta have the loader off my tractor already. So I'd have to load it up with my tractor, remove my loader, drive the tractor on there. Then I got no way to remove it. Um, or I could pin it on first and just remove my loader and drive it up there But then I don't have my loader with me. So I really need a bigger trailer um, And I 
I really like to trade this for a four foot box blade and I'd like to trade this one for a five foot back blade. Someday, hopefully, I could find someone that wants to trade me, but, you know, this is what I got. You work with what you have, you know. Unfortunately, I don't have the kind of money to just go out and buy another implement. Um, trust me, otherwise, I would. I'd have a land plane. I'd have a grapple and all kinds of other stuff. Um, someday, I want to get there. Um, I am planning on buying a grapple soon for the Kubota BX, so that's going to be really nice, especially when I'm clearing land and moving these logs around. Um, I ain't got to just try to bulldoze them all with a bucket. I could actually pick them up and transfer them. So, I am hoping to get a grapple fairly soon, so... Uh, but yeah, that's my grader box. That's my back blade. Those are the only two implements I have. I used to have a set of pallet forks that sat right here. But when I traded the skid steer for the Cummins pickup truck, the guy said he had to have the pallet forks with him. So I kind of had to let him go with the skid steer. And man, do I miss my pallet forks. Um, that is another implement that I'll be getting very soon uh, because I'm lost without them. I mean, moving trees and logs and, and just odd things, rocks and whatnot. Pallet forks are a great implement to have. Um, and if you can't afford a grapple, definitely, definitely get a set of pallet forks. Honestly, a set of pallet forks should always come before a grapple. There's more times you'll probably need the pallet forks than you will the grapple, but they're both very universal tools. So, um, but all right, guys, I'm going to get out of here. I forgot I got to help my buddy today, so that's why I stopped early. Um, so, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Sorry it was so short. Um, I'm going back to Sean's tomorrow to finish moving that topsoil. So, you guys will see that video coming up next. And, uh... We'll see you guys in the next one. Don't forget, guys, to like and subscribe. Thanks.